Let the candidates for the award of the President's Gold Medal and other prizes be presented. May I request Chairman BOG to please come forward to give the awards to students. Sir, I present Nitish Kumar Sirvastav from Department of Electrical Engineering, who has been declared winner of the President's Gold Medal for the year 2014 for the best academic performance in the graduating class among all disciplines of the undergraduate programs of study. Sir, I present Vatsal Saran from Department of Electrical Engineering, who has been declared winner of the Director's Gold Medal for the year 2014 for outstanding all-round performance and excellent organizational abilities and leadership qualities in the graduating class among all disciplines of the undergraduate and dual degree program of study. Sir, I present Vishesh Kumar Punjabi, who has been declared Winner of the Cadence Gold Medal for the year 2014 for the best MTech thesis in civil engineering. Sir, I present the candidates who have been declared winners of the General Proficiency Medals for the year 2014 for the best academic performance in their respective disciplines. Bachelor of Technology, Kalupalle Prasant Bharadwaj, Biological Sciences and Bioengineering. <laughs> Avinav Misra, Civil Engineering. <laughs> Deepak Pathak. <laughs> Computer Science and Engineering. Nitish Kumar Sirvasto, Electrical Engineering. <laughs> Pratik Agrawal, Material Sciences and Engineering. Prabhansu Pavecha, Mechanical Engineering. <laughs> Master of Science, Integrated Program, Abhijit Das, Chemistry. Swapnika Reddy R. Economics. <laughs> Khusbu Surana, Mathematics and Statistics. <laughs> Prasant Kumar Physics. B.Tech, M.Tech, Dual Degree Program, Vishesh Kumar Punjabi, Civil Engineering. <laughs> Manish Kumar, Chemical Engineering. Arbaz Khan, Computer Science and Engineering. <laughs> Kusagra Singh, Mechanical Engineering. <laughs> 
Sir, I present Aditi Gupta from Department of Economics, who has been declared winner of the Bhagwani Devi Mysore Gold Medal for the year 2014 for the girl student with outstanding all-round performance, academic excellence, social awareness, extracurricular activities, and leadership qualities in the graduating class among all disciplines of the undergraduate programs of the study. Sir, I present Amitesh Mahaswari from Department of Computer Science and Engineering, who has been declared winner of the IIT Kanpur Excellence Award in Art and Culture Activities for the year 2014 for outstanding work in various fields of art and culture activities. Sir, I present the candidates who have been declared winners of the IIT Kanpur Excellence Award in Community Services for the, two, for the year 2014 for outstanding work in various aspects of community services. Himansu Agrawal, <laughs> Chemical Engineering. Ankur Pandey, <laughs> Civil Engineering. Apur Goyal, Electrical Engineering. <laughs> Sir, I present the candidates who have been declared winners of the IIT Kanpur Excellence Award for Leadership in Students Affairs for the year 2014 for exemplary work related to aspects of student governance, hostel management affairs, and leadership in organization of events at department hall institute level. Sonia Parmar, Biological Sciences and Bioengineering. <laughs> Anand Mundra, Civil Engineering. Rohit Singh, Electrical Engineering. Tusar Misra, Mathematics and Scientific Computing. Sir, I present Sonia Parmar from Department of Biological Sciences and Bioengineering, who has been declared winner of the Matrola Gold Medal for the year 2014 for outstanding all-round achievement and value-based leadership. Sir, I present Vishesh Kumar Punjabi, who has been declared winner of the Professor Adidam Sri Ranga Sai Memorial Gold Medal for the year 2014 for the outstanding all-round achievement among students graduating in B.Tech degree program in civil engineering. Sir, I present Avijit Sarang and Deepak Pathak from Department of Computer Science and Engineering, who have been declared winner of the Tata Consultancy Services Award for the year 2014 for the undergraduate project work in the areas specified. Sir, I present Pravansu Pavecha, a student of B.Tech program in Mechanical Engineering, who has been declared winner of the Banco Foundation Prize for the year 2014 for the best academic performance in in the Mechanical Engineering Department. Sir, I present Pratik Agrawal, student of B.Tech program in Material Science and Engineering, who has been declared winner of the Batra Gold Medal for the year 2014 for the best academic performance. Sir, I present Khushbu Surana, student of MSc Integrated program in Mathematics and Scientific Computing, who has been declared Winner of the Bhagwan Das Sanghi Memorial Gold Medal for the year 2014 for the best academic performance in the mathematics department. 
सर आई प्रेजेंट नीतीश कुमार श्रीवास्तव स्टूडेंट ऑफ बीटेक प्रोग्राम इन इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियरिंग हु हैज बीन डिक्लेयर्ड विनर ऑफ द डॉक्टर प्रतीक मिश्रा मेमोरियल गोल्ड मेडल फॉर द ईयर 2014 फॉर द बेस्ट एकेडमिक परफॉर्मेंस सर आई प्रेजेंट स्वप्निल अग्रवाल स्टूडेंट ऑफ बीटेक प्रोग्राम इन मटेरियल साइंस इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट हु हैज बीन डिक्लेयर्ड विनर ऑफ द मार्स जी फोंटाना प्राइज फॉर द ईयर 2014 फॉर बेस्ट परफॉर्मेंस इन द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ कोरोजन सर आई प्रेजेंट खुशबू सुराना हु हैज बीन डिक्लेयर्ड विनर ऑफ द सुमन गुप्ता गोल्ड मेडल फॉर द ईयर 2014 फॉर द बेस्ट एकेडमिक परफॉर्मेंस इन द मास्टर ऑफ साइंस इंटीग्रेटेड प्रोग्राम इन मैथमेटिक्स एंड साइंटिफिक कंप्यूटिंग सर आई प्रेजेंट तमगना हजारा स्टूडेंट ऑफ एम एस सी इंटीग्रेटेड प्रोग्राम इन फिजिक्स हु हैज बीन डिक्लेयर्ड विनर ऑफ द बेस्ट फिजिक्स प्रोजेक्ट अवार्ड फॉर द ईयर टू थाउजेंड फोर्टीन फॉर द बेस्ट प्रोजेक्ट इन फिजिक्स डिपार्टमेंट सर आई प्रेजेंट अमितेश महेश्वरी एंड रवि रंजन हु हैव बीन डिक्लेयर्ड विनर ऑफ द बेस्ट सॉफ्टवेयर अवार्ड फॉर द ईयर टू थाउजेंड फोर्टीन for designing software adjust the best software from the department of computer science and engineering sir i present abhijit sarang and deepak pathak from department of computer science and engineering who have been declared winners of the vinay kumar sinha award for the year 2014 for executing a project that solves a problem affecting the common people sir i present vishesh kumar punjabi student of graduating program in civil engineering who have been declared winner of ranjan kumar memorial award 2014 for the best socially relevant project in the civil engineering department sir i present Iluru Sairam and Manish Kumar a student of graduating program in chemical engineering who have been declared winner of the Trilok Chandra Goel Memorial Medal 2014 for the best socially relevant project in chemical engineering department Sir I present candidates who have been declared winners of the dr eljabeth and dr varke cherian award for the year 2014 for executing a project that solves a problem affecting the campus community ankush panwar mechanical engineering prabhanshu pavecha mechanical engineering शोभित यादव मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग सर आई प्रेजेंट मिहिर कुमार झा एंड आयुष माथुर हु हैव बीन डिक्लेयर्ड विनर ऑफ द कुंवर देवेंद्र प्रताप सिंह एंड कुरानी कृष्ण कुमारी मेमोरियल अवार्ड फॉर द ईयर 2000 फॉर द बेस्ट बैचलर ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी प्रोजेक्ट वर्क इन द एरोस्पेस इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट सर आई प्रेजेंट द कैंडिडेट्स हु हैव बीन डिक्लेयर्ड विनर्स ऑफ द प्रोजेक्ट प्रोफेसेंसी मेडल्स फॉर द ईयर 2014 फॉर द बेस्ट प्रोजेक्ट वर्क इन देयर रिस्पेक्टिव डिसिप्लिन बैचलर ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी मेहर कुमार झा एरोस्पेस इंजीनियरिंग आयुष माथुर एरोस्पेस इंजीनियरिंग अंजने कोठारी बायोलॉजिकल साइंसेज एंड बायो इंजीनियरिंग सौम्या कपूर
स्नेहित अशोक कुंभरे सिविल इंजीनियरिंग राहुल मीना सिविल इंजीनियरिंग अभिजीत सारंग कंप्यूटर साइंस एंड इंजीनियरिंग दीपक पाठक कंप्यूटर साइंस एंड इंजीनियरिंग वत्सल सरन इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियरिंग निखिल गुप्ता इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियरिंग स्वप्निल अग्रवाल मटेरियल साइंस एंड इंजीनियरिंग दीप्ति वर्मा मटेरियल साइंस एंड इंजीनियरिंग अशिता प्रसाद मटेरियल साइंस एंड इंजीनियरिंग अंबर श्रीवास्तव मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग रवि रवि शंकर मिश्रा मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग शिवम शर्मा मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग कुंवर प्रदीप सिंह मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग एस विग्नेश मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग आयुष आनंद मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग युवराज खट्टर मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग शिवम प्रकाश मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग मास्टर ऑफ साइंस इंटीग्रेटेड प्रोग्राम सुमित चोखरा केमिस्ट्री पीयूष गुप्ता इकोनॉमिक्स प्रार्थना पी इकोनॉमिक्स स्वप्निका रेड्डी आर 
इकोनॉमिक्स मयंक राज मैथमेटिक्स एंड साइंटिफिक कंप्यूटिंग पियूष व्यास मैथमेटिक्स एंड साइंटिफिक कंप्यूटिंग प्रीतम मजूमदार मैथमेटिक्स एंड साइंटिफिक कंप्यूटिंग रोहित उपासनी मैथमेटिक्स एंड साइंटिफिक कंप्यूटिंग खुशबू सुराना मैथमेटिक्स एंड साइंटिफिक कंप्यूटिंग सर आई प्रेजेंट प्रोफेसर ए रंगनाथ हरीश प्रोफेसर ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियरिंग हु हैज बीन डिक्लेयर्ड विनर ऑफ द गोपाल दास भंडारी मेमोरियल Distinguished Teacher Award for the year 2014. May I now request Chairman B O G to address the gathering. esteemed chairman of the indian space research organization esteemed chief guest of this morning's function nobel laureate dr johan george bednoz distinguished members of the board of governors distinguished members of the academic senate heads of department faculty staff students parents and other guests it's very fortunate that we have today for this part of the function dr k radha krishnan chairman of the indian space research organization a person was moved india into the space age at much faster rate to greater status than anyone expected and in a very record time and he is still keeping it up he has brought a great name in, for india through very unique achievements in the space domain and we are very happy that we are you will be having the good fortune to listen to him and take his words of wisdom seriously this is a culmination count convocation it's a culmination of your several years of effort that you have put in in iit kanpur and you would have great expectations as you step into the in your future life but if you have to keep these expectations fulfilled you have to remember a few things and this is what i would i would like to highlight in the next few minutes first of all the there is a transformational trend that is taking place all over the world particularly in the field of technology and science and humanities today there are the technologies the knowledge system are changing so fast that's going to be difficult for individuals to even keep pace with the 
rate of change. The boundaries between science, humanities, and technology are fast disappearing. There are convergence of disciplines. There are no, lo no longer standalone disciplines. And we have examples of our own graduates from IIT Kanpur, and I probably this will happen to some of you. Started up with electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, civil engineering, went into biotechnology, went into uh, medical sciences, went into uh, uh, managements, uh, entrepreneurship, and so on. So, the, that you would have to recognize that if your dreams have to be realized, that you have to keep pace with it. The market systems are changing. Products are changing. The nature of products is changing. What you thought was a camera is no longer a camera today. Or that camera has taken so many forms. What you thought was the telephone. So there is so many changes that are taking place. And you have to be aware of. Particularly, you would be surprised, you may not be surprised that what you learned has become obsolete in a, in a, in a matter of a couple of years. Because either the knowledge has changed or the knowledge itself has dis, dis become irrelevant. So the transformational trend, what I call, I think you have to be very aware of and capture it and work for it and be what they call as a lifelong learner. You have to continuously be learning as to what is happening in your own field and how do you keep peace. Secondly, you must have a very bold initiatives. You must have the courage. To, this morning when uh, Professor um, uh, of our, uh, our Nobel laureate was uh, speaking, he said, if somebody says that this is impossible, you ask why. Why is it impossible? I mean, you must have, you know, the, the paradigm change, the uh, things that are happening, you must have the courage to say, I can do it, we can do it, and we will do it. So that is a kind of a second thing that you need to keep in, in the back of your mind. And the third is your commitment to social system, social responsibility. And I'm very happy to say IIT Kanpur students, both in the past as well as the present, I observed you are involved in a large number of socially relevant, community relevant projects. And in, today I saw the director awarding the recognition in the form of medals and certificates for some of the community related work that you have done. Many of you worked with underprivileged children. You have used your, your time and effort and energy to help a lot of children who are not fortunate enough to go to better education system. So, the, like we are talking about corporate social responsibility, which has now become a law in this country from 1st of April, the institutional social responsibility and individual social responsibility is very important. So, as we step into this world, and I'm sure that you will move fast, and I think in your time, the rate of your growth will be much faster. I mean, what I became at the age of 60, you probably will become at the age of 35. So that is the kind of opportunities the world is presenting, and uh, Wherever you are, whatever you do, just two things. One is, as everybody has emphasized this morning also, remember your parents who have made enormous sacrifices to do, to make you what you are. And remember your faculty who have dedicated enormous amount of time. See, you are the cream of the society when you enter the IIT and you have been exposed to some of the best minds among the faculty here. And this combination together will take you a great deal of distance. Then in so doing, remember that you are alma mater, IIT Kanpur, and you are welcome to this institution any day. Treat this as your home forever, all the time to come. I wish you good luck in whatever you do and wherever you are. Thank you. Goodbye.
I now request the Chairman Senate to introduce the Chief Guest. Before I do my pleasant duty of inviting, introducing our chief guest, let me spare a minute to address all our young friends who are graduating today. Borrowing from Socrates, education is kindling of a flame and not filling of a vessel. The motto is to uncover and not to cover. And this is exactly what IIT Kanpur does, has been doing since inception, pioneering science-based engineering education in the country. You are the torch bearers. So now it's up to you to prove yourselves, prove your mettle, and give back to humanity and also to the nation. With this degree, you have earned a passport to explore wherever you feel that you have your interest in. What we proclaimed today as our motto, do not forget, always remember that you can pursue only the excellence and you can never compromise with principles. I would give you half a minute's chance now to show your respect, record your most sincere appreciation to your parents who have made you and brought you to this level, and all the teachers who have taught you all these years. So you may now clap to your heart's content. Time is over. Let me now do the pleasant duty of introducing today's chief guest, Dr. K. Radhakrishnan, Chairman, Indian Research, Indian Space Research Organization, and Secretary, Department of Space. Dr. K. Radhakrishnan was born in 1949 at Thissur in the southern state of Kerala, India. He did his B.Sc. Engineering from the Government Engineering College at Thrissur in 1970. And then in 1971, he started his career in the, in the Indian Space Research Organization as an avionics engineer at the Vikram Saravai Center, Trivandrum. While at ISRO, he joined the management program at IIM Bangalore and received his postgraduate diploma in management degree from there in 1976. In 2000, he obtained his PhD from IIT Kharagpur. He has held several key positions at ISRO and was one of the key people behind India's Chandrayaan mission. He was the director of National Remote Sensing Agency, Department of Space during 2005 to 2008 and also the director of Vikram Saravai Space Center, Tiruvananthapuram, during 2007 to 2009. He took charge as the chairman of Indian Space Research Organization on 31st October 2009. In 2014, Dr. Radhakrishnan was conferred the Padma Bhushan by the Government of India for his contributions to science and engineering, especially in the field of space science and technology. Dr. Radhakrishnan is a life fellow of the Indian Geophysical Union and is also an accomplished vocalist in Carnatic music and a Kathakali artist. So it's now my privilege to invite Dr. Radhakrishnan. Most respected Chairman of the Board of Governors, Professor Ananda Krishnan, 
illustrious scientist and chief guest of the forenoon session, Nobel laureate Dr. Johannes George Petnos, distinguished director, Professor Indranil Manna, esteemed members of the Senate, learned deans, registrar, eminent faculty members, graduating students and their proud parents, distinguished invitees, friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen. I deem it my proud privilege to be part of this momentous event and also to deliver the 46th Convocation Address of this great institution. I am fascinated indeed by the illustrious array of alumni who have made a difference to this motherland through their pioneering contributions. They made a branch IIT Kanpur something which every young person in this country would cherish and should cherish. This morning I was going through the India today and among the several things that they do, one great thing that they have done is to evaluate the institutions imparting engineering education and obviously you are on the top. And if you look at the world <laughs> and look for institutions which are finding a place from India, certainly IIT Kanpur comes on the top of that list. So certainly this is an occasion which we should remember for the contributions made by the founders and the faculty members and your distinguished colleagues over the last 55 years to this motherland. As our distinguished chairman told, this is a milestone for the institute, for the faculty, for the students, for the parents. So let me first compliment all of them for this great achievement. And especially I see the beaming face of the parents who must be feeling proud not only in their wards getting their degrees, their wards being honored among their colleagues and friends for the greater work that makes a difference for them. Let me also say about 43 years ago, I too came out of a college in Trichur in a similar fashion. And one of the opportunities that came up in front of me, in fact two came up, one was to go for a written test for joining IBM, the other one was to go for an interview at the then Space Science and Technology Center, Thiruvananthapuram, and I got advice from my professor and I went to Trivandrum and I became part of the ISRO family, that's why I'm standing here today. And there are several of us in those days who came from all over the country, from IITs, from the academic institutions like universities, and who made a difference. And they started everything from the scratch. And if you had seen the Facebook of ISRO, ISRO official this morning, you would have seen a church building where in Trivandrum in a fisherman hamlet, the entire work was done by our Vikram Sarabhai the founder of Indian Space Research Organization, and the program started in a very modest way. But if you look at today, India is there. Two organizations in the world, one in the western part, Futron of USA, and on the other side from Japan, the Japan Science and Technology Center have done this benchmarking. They have been doing it for several years. And India stands in the sixth position in the world as far as space research is concerned. <laughs> USA, Russia, the European Space Agency comprising nearly 20 countries, followed by Japan, China, and India, and Canada follows. This is where we stand. This is a long journey that we made over the last five decades. 
by a great team that had nearly 16 to 17,000 engineers, scientists, administrators, technicians, and large number of partners from Indian industry and the academia. And I must also state here, in this long journey, there were several products of IIT Kanpur who took leadership positions. I may say just two examples. The INSAT 2 communication satellite that was built in India, designed by India, built in India, was led by one of the members of this institute, Mr. Ramachandran. When India decided to get into lunar exploration, Chandrayaan 1, a long time ago, and most recently the Mars Orbiter mission, the person who was really behind us in doing this mission strategy was again a product of this institute, Dr. Adimurthy, who also have been, has been interacting with your faculty members in the ISRO space technology cell at this institute. These are matters to be proud of, and I should say there are several of your young colleagues in various centers in ISRO. And if you look at what we have done over the last 50 years, we have been different from the rest of the countries who pursued space, science, and technology and research in the last five decades. In India, we are trying to find out how we can help the common man and the people. We call it a people-centric program, application-driven program, and a self-reliance program. That's why we achieved this position of number six in the world. Quantitatively, if you look at from the Aryabhata satellite built in 1975 till date, we did 113 missions. That is one part of it. But if you look at the way it grew, as Professor Anandagishan mentioned, in last 10 years, we did nearly 57 of that 113. In the last one year, we did 10 out of that 113. This is one aspect of it. The second aspect of it is the complexity over the years has grown tremendously. When we built the first communication satellite that gave a transponder output power of 100 watts. Today, the satellites which are on the orbit gave a power of nearly 5,500 watts. And what we are looking for the, for the future is something of the order of 15 to 20 kilowatts of power with a lot of other features built into it. When we built our first remote sensing satellite, Bhaskara, that could see an object of one kilometer by one kilometer with a specific signal coming out of it. And that is called a spatial resolution. And today what we have is 0 0.8 meters. And what we are looking is for 0 0.25 meter. That's on one dimension in the visible remote sensing area. But today we also have the capability, one among the three in the world, to penetrate the cloud and see what is happening. And that is important for looking at the kharif crops, for looking at the area inundated by floods, microwave imaging. And in this area, India is now working with Jet Propulsion Laboratory of USA to build a satellite together a dual frequency microwave imaging radar system with the L band and S band frequencies. And this is going to be a contribution to the humanity from these two agencies by the year 2020. This speaks about two things, not only the capability, but the benchmarking another space agency has got with the technological capability that India has achieved. Over the last couple of years, we did two joint satellites with the French Space Agency. One was to look at the tropical climate, which is important for the humanity, again, to understand the entire climatic processes and how the solar radiation coming in the equatorial region is getting spread across the Earth. And we also looked at the ocean using another satellite that was launched in 2000. 
13. We built them together. This is one aspect of the Indian space program. And you look at the Shiharikota, what's happening there now. I was there yesterday. We are launching using our PSLV five foreign satellites. And so far, this PSLV has done 26 missions. 25 of them were successful. And in that class, it is one of the best or the reliable launch vehicle of the world, sought after. We launched 35 satellites of other countries using the PSLD. And what's sitting there now is a mix of five foreign satellites. One is a prominent remote sensing satellite of France called SPOT-7. And four small satellites built by Germany, Canada, and Singapore. This shows the Indian launch vehicle technology has reached out to the world as one of the platforms for launching the foreign satellites. If you look at what is the infrastructure that India has created for the country in space, it's nearly 25 satellites that are working today, a fleet of 25 satellites. 10 of them look at the communication that provides nearly 200 transponders which are used in several sectors in the country. And just to know how they touch the life of every individual in the country. If a couple of months ago one of our satellites finished its orbital life and we wanted to migrate the users to another platform and came the hue and cry from the Andaman Nicobar Islands and their communication to that island will be affected using because the satellite was not there. And if you, for example, switch off some of these communication satellites for half an hour, every one of you will feel that something has gone wrong. You are not able to do certain things. If you look at the filing cyclone system that came to the east coast of India in October 2000. 13, we talked about a loss of human life in single digits. And if you look at the 70s, that used to be in 10,000s. And how this happened? There are several institutions working in this new science that has helped the people to get the warning and to evacuate them, along with the administration in the states. But the first information comes from the Indian satellite which has the payload to look at the cloud system movement, the cyclogenesis and the movement of the cyclonic system nearly 48 hours in advance, which is used by the India Meteorology Department, who generates the detailed forecast, which goes to the administration, who take effort to evacuate the people, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that is the power of the system in a disaster management. If you look at the management of land and water resources in the country, again it is these satellites. Whether it is microwave imaging satellite or the high resolution satellites that we make use of looking at the land, looking at the ocean. And India is there to stay as one of the best operator of earth observation satellites right from the year 1995 when globally people in US, in Europe, started receiving this data commercially for several of their purposes. Today, they receive data from us for their operational forecasts. So we have a place in this area. Satellite navigation, all of you are familiar with GPS system. This is something we ventured into very recently, and we have two satellites already in the orbit, IRNSS. Two more are going to come soon. And we also have the GPS signals improved for the aircraft navigation, it's called Gagan. This is something which is happening. More exciting thing, Chandrayaan-1 was a very major contribution from India that we launched in the year 2008. It was an international mission, not only the Indian scientific instruments, we had instruments from other countries. And two of those instruments, which were put by NASA scientists in our Chandrayaan-1, made great discoveries on the presence of water molecules, on water ice. That is one part of the story. We moved into the exploration of Mars, our neighbor, 
who is far away, 55 million kilometers when it is closer to us, 400 million kilometers when it is farthest to us. And we can do this exercise once in 26 months. Anybody in this world can attempt that kind of an exploration once in 26 months. Several did that. US did, USSR, Russia did, Europe did that. Of 51 missions that were done so far, success rate was very low because the lack of information. But we are late starter. We have the advantage of the learning that they made. And we ventured into it. And you have read about it. And if you look at the ISRO, ISRO mom, you will get the latest status of the Mars Orbiter mission. Today, it is at a radio distance of 110 million kilometers from Earth. The communication delay for a signal one way is slightly more than six minutes, and it is going to grow. And on September 24, 2014, when this Mars Orbiter spacecraft comes closer to Mars, we want it on that day at a distance of 500 kilometers plus or minus 50 kilometers. And if you are able to predict that the trajectory in which this Mars orbiter is going and going through the influences of solar radiation pressure, influences of all other planets which our orbital scientists will say as the n-body problem, we should be able to predict that after a long travel of 680 million kilometers on arrival, the distance from the surface of Mars would be 500 plus or minus 50 kilometers. And today, our prediction says it is at 540 kilometers. That is within the pillbox that is required. And we are keeping close watch of its health, of the autonomy that is built into it. And we are also planning for a couple of more trajectory correction maneuvers to ensure that even in the coming days, nearly 95 days to go, still we will be get, getting that target. And if you are able to do that, then India would be one of the first countries. In fact, I should say, in Asia, it would be the first. And if you are able to do successfully, a country to do successfully in the first attempt. So this is a challenge which we have taken up. And a lot has been written about the way we did it in two years. The cost at which we did, which is almost one-tenth of what others would have done for. So these are matters of detail. But the challenge that the young students who are coming out of this institute, of any institute in the country, should be looking for is there is nothing called impossible. In 2010, when we had the feasibility study, and with our PSLV launch vehicle, we devised a strategy, a novel strategy, to reach there. And with a vehicle that had only one-tenth of the power that recently America used for putting their MAVEN mission. We have done it, and both these spacecrafts are going to reach the orbit of Mars with just two days difference. So this is called lateral thinking, novel way of doing it, and some call it frugal engineering. So this is something which is unique to this Mars Orbiter mission, apart from all the scientific technological inputs that we are going to get out of it. Let me also talk about a recent major advancement that we made that is a successful launch of our GSLV with Indian cryogenic engine and, engine and stage technology for something for which we struggled for nearly 20 years. A technology that is the privilege of very few countries in the world. We needed that for our launch vehicles like GSLV, GSLV Mar 3, where 50% of the velocity for that satellite is provided by that one particular stage, cryogenics. And as students of engineering from this institute, I need not tell you about the complexity in dealing with a cryogenic 
engine and technology. On one side, we talk about 20 Kelvin flow age. On the other side, we talk about a combustion taking place as more than 3,000 Kelvin. And rotating parts, which go at nearly 40,000 RPM. And that is a system that we need to manage with several ignitions to take place. And oxygen and hydrogen are the two fluids that we use for this purpose. But India did that. And that's how we got the GSLV ready. Today, we are looking at the next level of advancements. That's a GSLV Mar 3, which can put a four-ton class communication satellite into the orbit. And soon, by August, we should be having the first experimental mission of that launch vehicle. And there will be a unique thing that is going in. That is a crew module which is required for putting human beings into space. And that is a major technology advancement that we are going to have in the coming future. In the area of space science, again, what is new that India is going to give? It's AstroSat. Over the last 20 years, if you look at the astronomical observations using satellite world over, you will find they have been looking at from one narrow band, gamma ray, X-ray, visible, etc. But this is a multi-observatory platform, a unique platform that India is going to provide. And if you look at the satellites that are coming up in this area in the world, AstroSat is going to be a major contribution from India to the entire world and the scientific community in India, not only those who build those instruments, but others too. Good device, good scientific observation program, and get into a new era of satellite-based astronomy research. So there are several challenges. So what I would request all young people who are here is when you make decisions on your career, think of the opportunities that the space program provides. Think of the challenges that the space program provides. Think about the satisfaction that you get when you find the systems that you build not only work in those harsh environments, but is used by the common man in this country. And that is a satisfying experience. One of my MBA classmates once met me and told that here there is a purpose in your life. There there was a purpose that was in material terms. But here, this is something which we cherish and we live for. So when you think like Professor Anandakrishnan or Professor Manna or your great teachers after 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, what you have given to this country, then you will be able to say, yes, A, B, C, D, I have tried, I was successful in a few areas. This is something which is satisfying. So you can take this decision, it not be today, but later in your life, and space certainly is a place where you can look for. I have given a handout on my address. I just highlighted a few points from that. But the last two sections, I just wanted to dwell a little bit, which talks about a couple of points that you would like to ponder over, which will help you to become a successful professional, successful with certain different yardsticks that are required for the life. What you require? Learnability. We talked about obsoleteness. After three, four years, you will find whatever you learned is all obsolete. And unless you have the learnability to learn every day something new, you will not be up to date. So this is something which we need to inculcate. One of my guides told me, all these degrees that we get, here what we learn is how to learn. That's what you have got from here. So continue that learning process, learn every day. Some people see trees. Some people see the forest. When you are in any profession, it is essential that you look at both. That is, 
while organizing this convocation, while managing a company, everywhere this is important. You need to have see, see the large picture, you also get into the minutest detail. Both are important for you. Passion. Without passion, if you do anything, nothing is going to happen. So this is something which you must keep. We all talk about intelligent quotient, IQ. You are all having intelligent quotient. If you take 200, you may be somewhere near 150, 160, 180. But that is only one part of it. Somebody has defined a couple of other quotients. One is called business quotient. In your area of activity, in your technological domain, how good you are, how wide you are. This is a continuum process. Something called political quotient. That is how you are able to do things. We saw towards the end of the session several people coming here and receiving medals, whether it is managing the canteen or managing a project for the institute. What they have shown is translation of their knowledge, what they have, into something where they can contribute. So this is extremely important. If you look at the captains of various teams that are in the campus, you will see they manage people. Chuck De, India, a famous movie of Shah Rukh Khan, where people of different culture, people with different values, but all competent people are brought into a team and then you produce something which is far more than the sum of each individual's capability. The synergy that is brought in, that is another capability that you must have. Emotional quotient. How do you perform in a group? And lastly, there is something called spiritual quotient. What is honesty, integrity, the value system that you inculcate from your parents, from your teachers, from your guides, from your colleagues. And somebody has told all these four quotient, business, emotional, political, spiritual, should be there in a person if you want to grow up. If you do not have that balance, at some point of time you will find you get rejected. So keep this in mind that you should develop ultimately all these. So and finally, people will be looking at, is an honest person, has he got integrity, not only in terms of monetary terms, but even in terms of professional level, actually. This is something. Share the results with your colleagues and friends. And do refrain from using the word I. A few months ago, ISRO was selected. The team ISRO was selected for a couple of awards. It was team ISRO. And somebody asked a question, what difference it makes how it is happening, when I just told, when we join ISRO, we give our I to ISRO, and then we become we. If you look at on Duradarshan, on the day of the launch, nearly 1,000 people working at Sriharikota looking at one object, whether the rocket is going to go up. There is a success, everything is fine. But when there is a problem, and which we face normally before the launch, they work as a team. Nobody worries who gets an award, who gets a recognition, or who is the project director, etc. Et Everyone, from chairman to cook, will be there for action. And that is what happens in an organization where teamwork is what matters. And that is there in the reward system, that is recognized. Somebody who can lead a team, who can produce things, irrespective of whether he is senior or junior people are respected. And something which happens rarely in organizations is we cut across the hierarchy. And in our organization, we have nearly 4,500 young scientists and engineers drawn from all over this country who have joined over the last 15 years. In an organization of a size of 16,000, where we have 10,000 scientists and engineers, 4,500 people of your generation, this generation, need to be brought into the system and they have their voice, and we listen to that. We answer those questions. And finally, that is important because that system which is going up goes up only because of the laws of physics, not because an order has been given by a superior authority. So we listen to. And this is something we learn from our elders, founders, Professor Thaw and Professor Sarabhai. Is there a young man in the audience who will ask a question and you have to answer that question and satisfy him. We try to do that always. So this is a place where openness is there, transparency is there. And that is the reason this thing happened. And we are judged, we cannot hide anything, the rocket goes up or it comes down to 
way of Bengal. Satellite works or satellite does not work. It is one or zero situation. So easily anyone can judge us and we go through the judgment every day. But finally we are judged by how we are loving for the country for which we are respected for. And as I said, this is something which we feel proud. So you are on the verge of getting into a professional life and think of some of these things. It might be useful for you. Finally, I should thank my dear French Professor Indranil Manna for inviting me to this great institute. We all heard about IIT Kanpur. I couldn't become a student of IIT Kanpur, I should say. I could stand in front of you participating in this great program. Thank you very much. Good luck to all of you. Thank you. Yeah, I now request Chairman Senate to present a memento to the Chief Guest. Please rise for the national anthem. Declared the convocation closed. Please keep standing. Thank you very much.